Joe's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today we're going to be installing an air dryer and one of the lines in my air compressor system. And before we do that, I want to kind of go around and show you about four or five years ago uh, the system that I installed. This is before I did YouTube uh, videos, so this is this was done prior to that. But in case you guys haven't noticed, let me go ahead and show you what we're going to be doing, and then show you the system that I have, and then show you what we're going to be doing and where we're going to be doing it. First of all, this is the air dryer right here that we're going to be installing. Uh, a pretty complicated and sophisticated looking piece of equipment. And I'm going to be needing that to, to operate the plasma table that will be soon arriving here. And they say it's uh, really important that it operates off of dry air. So that's part of getting that system all put together. So here we are. This is where I started um, when I installed this system. You can see the three quarter inch copper line right there. <clears throat> And there's two hose outlets. One of them permanently operates the can crusher right here. And the other one is just in case I needed some more air. And then you might see a ball valve down there. That right there uh, releases the pressure or uh, the moisture that would be trapped in the line. Uh, every once in a while, I give that a little twist and get the air or that moisture, I should say, out of the line. From there, <clears throat> it goes up and over the top and goes into this Cox air reel. Uh, right here and I I had this thing custom made it uh, I had this custom made it it's got 35 feet of 3 8 hose on it and it's enough to handle anything in the shop right here it retracts up out of the way as you can see uh, really nice location I really like it and then from there it goes across and then it makes a turn <clears throat> and it goes over here and then down the wall where I've got another uh, air outlet and that's a 20 foot um, Harbor Freight uh, retractable hose reel. Uh, pretty bit less expensive. I think I paid $20 for that thing where I paid almost 400 for the Cox reel. But uh, nevertheless, um, I've got air here on this side of the shop and that takes care of anything that I would need over here. And from there, <clears throat> well, with the garage door up, you can't really see it, but it goes all the way down to the very end of the garage. It goes over the top and it ultimately comes down this side where it goes around and comes in here finally into the air compressor but not before i installed another uh moisture release valve right here as you can see i cracked that and you saw the moisture come out every once in a while i do that just to get the moisture out of the line one more air outlet here with 50 feet of hose that allows me to get out into the yard area there with no problem. And then right here, <clears throat> I've got a half inch line that comes off and goes over it to a regulator. And that is what we're gonna be replacing here today. Uh, the regulator is for my plasma cutter. It's uh, 60 PSI. I've regulated that down to about 70 PSI from 150. I just don't wanna blow the guts out of this thing <clears throat> again. So, uh, I reduced the air down, but hey, we're going to take all that out and we're going to replace this with this new system and get it up on the wall right here. So that's the plan for today. So stay with me. Let's get her done. All right, so the first thing I would do is get the area completely cleared out, get all my machines out of here, my all my extra tanks, bottles, and toolboxes, whatever I've got hanging around, get everything all cleared out so we have a nice, clear, open space to work. Let's do it. Okay, so now that I got everything out of the way and we've got a nice area to work with right here, the next thing I want to do is I want to shut my air compressor off and actually drain the line, shut all the valves off where it needs to be. Uh, so be sure that there's no air in the uh, no air in the tank or no air in the lines. I'm going to be doing a little bit of cutting over here, and last thing I need is any kind of problem. So we'll shut that off, shut this off, and start draining the line a little. All right, so I got the lines all completely drained. Now it's time to drain this tank right here. And I've cracked the valve open right here and I'm slowly gonna crack this valve because it's just super loud and I'm just gonna take the five minutes or whatever it takes to get this tank completely drained. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna do a little cleanup down here and get things uh, nice and cleaned up and ready to go.
All right, so I'm just uh, now going to remove the section of airline that I'm not going to be using right here. And the first thing I had to do is use my cutoff wheel on my angle grinder to get right up against the wall to cut that section. And then I'm able to use my pipe cutter right here for the other section. I just didn't have the room for the pipe cutter there. But once I got that section out of the way, then it's time to remove the old rinky-dink 2x4, whatever that is, spacer that I had made with the old regulator. I did that in such a hurry one day that I just wanted to get it up. But once I got all that out of the way, and yeah, then we're finally uh, ready to get moving forward. Okay, so a couple things I want to point out here before we go too much farther. I'm starting to make my fit up right here and get all the pieces in that I need to do. And where I cut this off originally was right here. I, of course, it's my luck. I can't really see what's going on. But as I was cleaning the ends here, I found that the pipe was focus. You can see it is crimped there and on the back side, making this thing out around, and that's right where the fitting's gonna need to go. So I ended up having to cut this back another couple more inches, cut this off, and now everything is perfectly smooth. That's one thing. Of course, that's my luck. Wouldn't you know it? Anyways, we solved that problem. Now I wanna talk to you a little bit about this slip-on fitting right here. All right, so I'm trying to make my fit up between here and here with the T and in here, and you can see I'm up against the wall here, and there's no room to move this back. The compressor's bolted to the ground. So I'm worried about sliding this in and no room. So this coupling right here, I happen to pull out of my drawer, uh, fits right over the top, but it goes right halfway, and it, I, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe you can if I bring it in. Focus. Ah, there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little there's a little dimple right there, and there's another one on the other side right here. And I know you're not going to be able to see it on the inside there, but it just provides a stop at the halfway point, and it's designed that way from the factory, uh, so it goes halfway on, halfway on. Uh, so I'm thinking if I grind that little tit off on both sides, uh, I'll be able to slide this coupling all the way this way make my fit up and then slide it back and I should be able to get plenty of solder around both sides right here and my fit up should be perfect. So that's the game plan. Let's see how that works. All right, so I went ahead and I knocked those burrs off on the inside and I think this is gonna work. You can see that coupling slides right on there perfectly. I'll be able to drop my piece in, slide that thing back and I'll be able to make my connection and everything will be good. Let's do it. All right, so I've cut everything to dry fit. Uh, remember, this is just a dry fit. I just want to be sure everything is going to work. This thing's going to slide in here like that. And then this T slide in here like that. This piece right here will slide in there. Remember, we got our coupling. That slips over the top there. This will come up here. This will slide over there. So far, so good. This piece is going to go on here like this. That's looking pretty good. And then we have this piece going to go on here. That looks pretty good. And then this piece right here goes on there. And then from there goes our dryer. So. Looking pretty good so far. I think it's time to start putting things together. Okay, so we got all our pieces all dry fit together. So far, so good. Everything is working out pretty good. But, but now I'm going to take a little change. And I think the best thing for me to do is to make a bracket that goes between the studs right here. Because that dryer is going to, I'll make it whether I weld it or bolt it to this metal bracket that I'm going to wait, that I'm going to make. I want it to be securely in place. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take this section right here and I'm going to solder this fitting onto here. I'm trying to reduce the amount of heat that I'm going to have uh, welding all this together. And then I will mount everything together and then we'll be able to tie all this stuff together and solder together. This will be in place and hopefully everything's going to work out alright. I'm sure it will. Let's do it. 
So I didn't, well, I wasn't certain what I was going to use for a bracket here, but I went over to my metal scrap area and I found this piece of quarter inch thick by four inch flat bar stock that uh, was about 18 and a half inches long. It couldn't be more perfect for the job that I'm doing right here. So I was able to uh, uh, drill the holes out for the lag bolts. Uh, they're going to get into the stud and then uh, drilled out the holes that I'm going to use to mount the dryer to this plate. It actually worked out really good. You can see I just uh, attached it to the studs. You can see I had some other brackets in that area um, from previous holes. But once I got everything all uh, uh, leveled out and, and mounted, uh, they're ready to go. You know, I, uh, this is the piece I was talking about that I wanted to solder up and install to the dryer before I started uh, soldering everything together on the on the on the other part of the fittings because I just wanted to reduce as much uh, as much heat as I possibly could to the dryer area. And so, by putting this on right here, um, hopefully I won't draw any heat to that uh, being about a foot away. So once I got that done, I just installed it to the bracket. It worked out perfect, and we're ready to start soldering some fittings up. Okay, so now that I got the dryer pretty much installed where it needs to be, I got all my fittings dry fit, everything is working perfectly. I think now I can start taking apart some of this stuff, actually taking it over to my workbench, do the finished sanding, prepping, and solder a bunch of these joints together and only make maybe one or two uh, uh, solder joints over here. The rest of it can be fabricated over my, uh, over my workbench. So let's do it. All right, so, you know, I'm starting to put all this together now. I, I, I need to tell you guys, I'm not a plumber by trade. I've been in construction for most of my life. My dad was a plumber, but uh, that doesn't mean anything. I've had very little success with plumbing over the years. But I do know enough that you're supposed to uh, sand uh, raw copper, the both fittings inside and out, uh, get everything nice and clean. I got plenty of flux on there. Um, and start soldering everything together. Now, I, I'm not the best at this uh, soldering deal. That I did the best I could. Everything seemed to work pretty good. Everything looks like I've got some good coverage. And um, I understand the rule of thumb is uh, for every uh, diameter, uh, this is three-quarter pipe. Uh, when you do your soldering, you're supposed to use three-quarters of an inch of solder for a three-quarter pipe, half-inch of solder for a half-inch, and so on and so forth. Now here's a piece of um, a sheet metal that I found laying around my shop because I temporarily screwed that on there uh, so I would reduce uh, a major fire when I'm soldering this up against the, the drywall right there or damage to the wall itself. Uh, worked out pretty good. I was able to get everything soldered up with uh, minimal amount of damage. And so far everything's going along pretty good. Got the last joint right here. And so there's only thing, one thing left to do and that's to see if she holds air. All right, well, there it is. The air dryer is installed successfully. Um, now, I'm not a plumber, so I don't do all this soldering all every day, so it may not be as pretty as it, as it should, but uh, I hope it all holds air. The only one thing left to do is that's to turn it on, fill the system, and see if she works. Let's do it. First, I gotta plug it in. Now we'll turn it on and see if it works. Well, I got everything put back into place. Everything is where it's supposed to be. The air dryer is successfully installed, holding air. There's no leaks. I'm ready for that new plasma table. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.